Hello everyone, how are you all? Very nice to see you once again. Today we'll be starting with our next chapter of 11th class that is introduction to three dimensional geometry. It's a very very interesting chapter and also an easy one. Now till 10th standard you have been studying x axis and y axis, right? For example, this was your y axis and this was your x axis. So you have been studying this. Any point in the xy plane is represented as bracket x then comma y. For example, it's a p point. So when we are dealing with the shapes or the coordinates of points that are lying in xy plane the geometry so formed is known as two dimensional geometry because one and two there are only two dimensions included but as soon as we add another dimension it becomes three dimensional geometry now you can see on your book that uh, they have drawn the plane as x y z and most of the times in your book they have drawn z here and then z here then y then x but you don't have to you don't have to draw like the book we will just go with the straight denotions that are x y and z all right so let's move ahead and uh, let's understand three dimensional geometry the concept of 3d in some details now here you must know that this is our negative x axis and this is our negative y axis so this is known as x y plane and this is of course x dash y plane this is x dash y dash plane and this is x y dash plane right now if a point is here then both of the coordinates of the point will be positive here the x will be negative and y will be positive the x will be negative and y will also be negative the x will be positive and y will be negative right these are the signs of any points that are lying in all of these four planes right this is very clear and very easy to understand but now we have to add the third dimension that is z axis so let's understand that what z axis is and where we can draw that what does it represent and all about that now this is our system of coordinates in a space when we draw only x axis and y axis it is known as plane but as soon as we add z axis it becomes space so whenever you will talk about three dimension you will not say the x y z plane you will say space yeah but if you are taking two axes at a time then of course it will be a plane only so in how many planes this system is being divided that is x y plane y z plane and z x plane right because we are taking two axes at a time so that's why we are calling it as x y plane y z plane and z x plane so now let's understand what actually z axis represents if you are having a look at any object like a box or a cuboid you can see that it has a length it has a breadth and it has a certain height as well so that height is represented with the help of z axis we are drawing z axis as a bit inclined axis but in fact z axis here like it is pointing towards you so it's actually the height of a particular object or width or breadth you can say but we cannot draw anything in the space we cannot draw anything like that so that's why to represent z axis we draw it in inclined position the another example of a three dimensional object that you come across in your day to day life is a ball now sometimes we talk about a circle that it's a circle right but sometimes we talk about sphere so what's the difference between sphere and a circle a circle is a two dimensional figure like your bangle like something that you are wearing bracelet kind of it's a two dimensional figure but on the other hand the sphere is a three dimensional figure like a ball like a basketball like a simple plastic ball all right so ball and sphere ball is a sphere and uh, the rest of the things which are circles are basically the examples of three dimensional and two dimensional objects respectively so i think that you have understood uh, what actually i am talking about what actually the third dimension is correct so let's move ahead and uh, let's see what 
is there in this system of coordinates now previously we have talked about quadrant first quadrant second quadrant third and fourth quadrant but in this case we will be talking about the octants okay and there will be total eight octants because of course one more axis is being added so we will consider the positive z axis as well and the negative z axis as well so that's why by adding all of the quadrants the resultant we get octants so there are total eight octants and in this video we'll simply deal with the sign of the coordinates of points which are in any of the octants so we will go line by line and uh, then we will get to know that in which octant which coordinate is negative or positive on your book there is a table that is stating that there are x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate and there are quadrants written like first quadrant and then second quadrant and then third quadrant of course the fourth one the fifth the sixth seventh and eighth basically this table is made to make you guys understand the signs of the coordinates of points which are lying in any of the octant so you don't have to remember that uh, in which octant the sign is going to be negative and in which octant the sign is going to be positive you don't have to remember that you just have to make a simple calculation in your mind that we have just done in the previous diagram that i have made of four quadrants so we will not disturb the z axis or the z coordinate at all we'll firstly simply write the x and y coordinates now consider it's a plane okay the x y plane only so here it is x axis y axis and here it is negative x axis and here it is negative y axis correct so now for time being just omit z axis think that there is no z axis so there are four quadrants first second third and fourth in the first quadrant the sign of x is positive and y is also positive so in the first positive y is also positive in the second y is positive but x is negative so x negative y positive then in the third both are negative then in the fourth x is positive and y is negative so yeah we have done that from the quadrants we have made the signs we have analyzed the signs which x and y coordinates will get if they are lying in any of the octant so keep in mind that these are octants but we are deciphering this with the help of quadrants now x is positive y is positive now you just take positive z axis under your consideration and simply if we are taking positive z axis then of course all of the signs of z coordinate will be positive right because we are taking positive z axis in, under our consideration in the first time now for the other four octants the x and y coordinates will remain same because we will take the first quadrant the second the third and the fourth quadrant again but now the z axis will be downwards like behind our notes okay behind our notebook so that's why the z axis which will be under consideration will be just below this page which cannot be uh, shown as you know so that's why all of the other coordinates will same in first as in the fifth so both positive negative positive negative negative and positive negative and now the z axis which was under our consideration that was the negative one so all of the z coordinates will become negative this is how you can easily make the table of signs of coordinates of in any of the octants and without you don't have to remember any of the things you only have to remember the quadrants only the quadrants i'm saying the quadrants not the octants okay so with the help of quadrants you will be able to make the table of signs of the octants very very easily right so there are only two examples in the very first exercise and we can easily do that in the first example they have said that uh, here is some point p and the coordinates of p are 2 4 and 5 and on the literally same length of p there is a point f okay so there is a point f and we have to write the coordinates of point f now in your book they have taken z axis to be here y axis to be here and x axis to be here so now if here is z here is x and here is y and f is lying in z and x plane 
okay so f is lying in x and z plane and of course the y coordinate will become zero so the coordinates of f will be 2 comma 0 comma 5 yeah so that was only our sum and uh, that's it so you just can analyze that uh, which sign a coordinate is going to take from the quadrant or the plane in which that point is lying so f was lying in zx uh, don't see these okay see these z and x plane so xz plane the coordinates will remain but the, there is no y axis so the coordinate of y axis will become zero all right now we have to find the octant in the second example it's given that find the octant in which point minus 3 1 2 and minus 3 1 minus 2 are lying so now we can see that x coordinate is negative so x is negative in second y is positive in second octant z is positive in second octant from the table very very easily all right so the answer of this will be this point is lying in second octant and this x is negative so x is negative y is positive y is positive but here z is again negative so x negative y positive and z negative it means it is lying in the sixth octant so yeah but if you don't know that how to make this table then how will you be able to do sums like these so that's why the formation of this table is very very important because the other sums in the exercise are also dealing with the same right so this was the concept of three dimensional geometry only one axis is added and the things are i guess more easier than before so you can do the you can do the whole exercise with the help of this table and uh, keep practicing of this table as well that how to make it how to decode it all right so i'll see you in the next video and don't forget to press the subscribe button before you leave my channel all right so see you in the next video thanks for watching have a nice day and keep practicing